Hello, this is Diana Bolander. I'm the Assistant Director, Curator at the Rare West Art Museum. Here I am, this is my uh, museum selfie for this year, uh, with The Unknown Female by Alexander Marquis. And this is in our collection and it's from 1864. Today's staff pick for March 25th, 2020, I didn't pick just one work. I wanted to focus on an experience that we offer. Each March, every second grader in the Manitowoc Public Schools does a tour of the Rye West Art Museum to see the youth art exhibit and to go through the mansion. This year, about half the schools had to cancel these trips because of school being canceled due to the COVID-19 outbreak and the social distancing measures that we're taking as a community. So I thought I might go over some of the things I've been talking about to the second graders, do a little walk through of the house, and um, I think it'll probably be of interest to a lot of other Facebook friends, regardless of their age, especially those that haven't visited in a while or are unable to visit the house due to the stairs. Now we do have plans to install an elevator in the next two years, so hopefully this will make it easier for everyone to explore the house and learn about the art and architecture. I hope this little video will help inspire you to visit the mansion and see it for yourself once we reopen to the public. Here's what the mansion looks like from the outside. The Roar West Art Museum is a department of the city of Manitowoc, which means that the building and all the art in our collection belongs to the people of Manitowoc. Now, that doesn't mean we let everyone handle the art when they come in, but it does mean that the community can take pride in the fact that it owns a really invaluable collection of artwork and the fact that we value the arts so much as a community that we have a dedicated space to exhibit and talk about art. The house was built between 1891 and 1893 by Joseph and Mary Vilas. It was designed by the Milwaukee architects George Ferry and Alfred Klaus, who also designed the Pabst Mansion in Milwaukee. Joseph Vilas was the mayor of Manitowoc from 1893 to 1895, and he was a railroad and mining entrepreneur. Mary Vilas' wife died of heart disease in 1901, and Joseph lived in the house for a few years until his death in 1905. The house was empty for a few years until Reinhardt Rahr bought it in 1910. He put in electricity and city water, and he lived there with his family. Um, and uh, Reinhardt Rahr died in 1921. His widow, Clara, donated the house to the city of Manitowoc in 1941 to be used as a museum and civic center. The Rahr family did a lot for Manitowoc. They also donated the land that became the school forest. And I like to bring that up on the tours uh, because most of the students in the Manitowoc Public Schools have visited the school forest at least a couple of times. And because of their gift of the house to the city, the Rar family is used as one of the names of the museum, Rar West. I'll tell you more about where the West part comes from in a little bit. This room is called the Central Gallery. It's on the first floor of the mansion and it was split into two rooms a welcoming space by the front door, which is right behind us in this picture. And then on the other side of the room, that would have been the formal dining room. And the kitchen is located to the right of the large windows you see at the end of the room. You can see where the room was opened up, uh, where that large beam is in the ceiling. That's where the wall came down and divided the room. Uh, there was a fireplace over by where the green arrow was pointing. And this is a good example of how most of the spaces that you see in the museum today have been changed in some way. A house, even a grand house like this one, doesn't always make a good museum because doorways are small and sometimes the rooms can be a little cramped. So over the years there have been many alterations to the house to make it more useful as a civic center and then an art museum. The center gallery today is used to showcase some of our best examples of modern and postmodern art. So if you came in today, this is what you would see. It's uh, from left to right, Stuart Davis's downtown street. Georgia O'Keeffe's Pine and Birch Tree 2, Andy Warhol's 59th Street Bridge Tramway. Then we have Sonia Delaney's Composition and Juan Moreau's The Banquet. With the second graders, um, I usually talk a lot about the parlor. And this is the only room in the house that has had a period treatment done to it um, and is on the first floor of the mansion. This room is set up to be like the parlor was from around 1910 when the Rars lived here. And the furniture is original to the house, so it's the actual furniture that was here when the Rar family lived here. Now the furniture that's in the rest of the house and all the other rooms, you'll see in some of the pictures as we go through. None of that furniture is original to the house, it was all purchased later um, so that we could use it for seating and such uh, in the museum. So we uh, talk a lot about what the kids can see and what they can't see. The room here demonstrates the taste 
and social status of the Rar family. They often point out the fancy furniture, the wall coverings, which are reproductions of the original silk coverings the Rar family installed, and the chandelier. The chandelier is often cited as the fanciest thing in the room. Uh, the chandelier is not original to the room, however. It was actually from the Rar brewery and then given to the museum later on. I usually ask the kids uh, what kind of things they thought the kids who lived here would do in this room. Examples of things we talk about are reading books, playing cards and board games, and sewing. We talk about how generally being rowdy in this room would be discouraged. You might be thinking about how this room is similar to or different from your own living room. What don't you see here? Usually the kids talk about how there's no television or internet, video games or computers, which is shocking and scandalous. Uh, and when I tell them there's probably radio, they don't really seem quite so consoled by that information. After we're done in the parlor, we go into the Victorian room east. Uh, a lot of the art that we'll see in the next few rooms was given to the museum by John and Ruth West. Ruth West became involved in the arts in Manitowoc in the 1960s and served on the board of the museum for a long time. She was very interested in developing a collection of art for the community. The West family gave the museum funding to build the modern addition onto the house in the 1970s and 80s. And this is where the West part of our name comes from. Rar from the Rar family, who gave the house, and West from John and Ruth West, who gave almost 400 works of art to the museum and built the modern edition. The Victorian East Gallery features portraits from the collection. We'll talk a little bit about what a portrait is and what a self-portrait is, and then I divide the kids into groups and ask them to find someone in the room that they would like to be friends with, and then they'll have to share why. So some popular choices are, usually someone will pick Joseph Vilas, here he's seen with Mary, um, he built the house, and they really like his beard, so they'll often pick him because of that reason. On the right here, we have Rambent Peel's portrait of Anne Foster Swift from 1836, and they always think that she is a really nice lady, and they like her, um, her shawl. On the left, we have Picasso's head of Jacqueline. This is often picked, um, I think it might be in part because they recognize the name Picasso, so they think it must be an important work of art, but also it's a different material. Everything else in the room is either a print or a painting, so it's two-dimensional, and this um, is a, on ceramic, it's like on a ceramic bowl, so it, it juts out from the wall, and I think it sticks out, but it's really nice because it offers us an opportunity to really contrast uh, this stylistically with the more formal paintings. And on the right, you see William Paxton's The White Bird. And we'll talk more about how a painting can convey a person's wealth when we talk about that piece. Uh, then we go into the Victorian Room West. And this is where we have landscapes and still lifes. And I'll be honest with you, usually by this point in the tour, I have about 10 minutes left. So we'll rush through the rest of the house so they have time to at least see most of the things. If I have time, we talk about the five senses and what season they think each image is in and why. We'll often talk about um, Arthur Tate's work here, Deer Crossing Stream. There's actually a lot of drama in this image. It might not look that way upon first glance, but in the background on the left, there are two wolves that are stalking the deer. And his um, Tate's love of the natural landscape is really expressed in the depiction of this, of uh, waterfalls and everything. And this work is um, a scene from the Adirondacks in New York State, but we also have some images that are of scenes closer to home that the kids can relate to a little bit more. This little painting, it's 16 by 10 inches, was done by Johann Berthelsen, and he drew on his memories of the Wisconsin woods where he grew up. And he lived in Manitowoc growing up, and then later moved to New York City. The students really respond to this watercolor by Donnell Hanna. We don't have a ton of information on this artist, but uh, I think because it's watercolor and most of them have worked with watercolors, they respond to that and also the bright colors really draw them in. We'll often do some comparisons and talk about what season they think it is um, and if they were to step into one of these scenes, uh, what each of their senses would experience. At this point, we usually head upstairs to the mansion, to the second floor of the mansion, excuse me. And when we get to the landing, we usually pause. Um, there's more landscapes on view. And I like to point out the chandelier, not the chandelier, but the light fixture. Uh, this is the light fixture that was originally in the parlor when the Rar family lived in the house. Uh, the rooms on the second floor were mostly used as bedrooms uh, by members of the household. And if you go up one more floor on the third floor, most of those rooms were used as servant quarters and guest rooms. 
Uh, today we use the second floor to display some of the smaller and more unique collections of the museum. The third floor is closed to the public. It's used for storage mostly. The first room we come to, if you turn left from the landing, is the ivory room. Martin Schwartz was a local businessman of Schwartz Manufacturing in Two Rivers, and he traveled a lot for work and collected these ivory sculptures from China and gave them to the museum later on. I would say probably about 90% of second graders don't know what ivory is, so we spend some time talking about how ivory is sourced from the teeth and tusks of animals like elephants, hippos, and narwhal. And uh, you can tell in some of the pieces, some of the figures, you can see how they're kind of curved. They don't stand up quite straight. Um, and that's probably because they're carved from elephant tusks would naturally take that shape. Uh, we have a piece of ivory sculpture that we pass around that's so students can feel what it feels like. And we try to emphasize the importance of being really aware of where materials come from and how it affects our world. Because of the great demand for ivory sculptures like this, elephants have been poached and killed off to the point where they're in danger of extinction. And now there are laws around the world and in the United States that you can't buy and sell pieces like this. And it's part of our responsibility as the museum to really talk about that and, and let our viewers know. This room was originally used as a closet or a servant's bedroom. The wallpaper was put in in the 1970s by a group of volunteers. We always talk about what it's made out of. Um, it's actually made of brown grocery bags and gold leaf, so quite the combination of materials there. At this point, I'll open the water closet and talk about how the house, when the house was built, it didn't have a city plumbing. And the students usually notice at this point that there is no toilet in what they would think of as the bathroom. So this is usually a piece of information that causes them to be horrified and decide that maybe they don't want to live in this house after all. Now, the RARs did put in modern plumbing when they moved in, and there was a bathroom on the second floor, but we don't have that open to the public. For the remainder of the tour, I usually break the kids up into groups and have them explore the rest of the rooms and find something to share with the larger group. The first room is the doll room. We highlight some of the dolls from the RAR collection in the built-in cases you see on the right, and then the doll houses and dioramas are reminiscent of what the RAR children might have played with when they lived there. The next room is the porcelain room. It features the work of Edward Marshall Bowen, who crafted porcelain sculptures. This work of the eagle was created to honor the bicentennial celebration in seven, excuse me, 1976. And the eagle's nest contains two chicks, representing the two centuries of American history, and an egg, which represents the future, the next hundred years to come. In the next room, it's the Kamigawa room. We feature gifts that the city of Manitowoc has received from our sister city of Kamigawa, Japan. Kids are usually really drawn to the samurai doll with his swords and weapons. And the last room on the second floor that we visit is the wood carving room, which features the work of local sculptor Richard Young. These works were gifted to the museum by the Kohler Foundation in 2008. The museum has 139 examples of his work. So the cases in this room are really great when you're in the room looking at the art because they're mirrored. So you can see the back of the works. But when you're going in to take pictures for a presentation like this, they don't work that well because you end up with a lot of pictures of me. So, uh, But when you come in, you'll see how great they look. There's one last thing that I like to talk about with the students before they leave and go back to their classrooms. And it's a small exhibit that we have about the Sputnik satellite. In September 1962, the Russian satellite Sputnik 4 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and started to, sit, to disintegrate. A piece of the satellite crashed to Earth and landed right here on Manitowoc, on 8th Street, just steps outside of the museum's front door. Now, this was the first time that any man-made object that had been sent into space survived re-entering the atmosphere and didn't completely burn up. It made Manitowoc really world famous. You can see um, in the picture on the right that it left a little bit of a hole <laughs> in 8th Street. Um, on the left, there's a replica of the piece that was recovered. The original piece went back to Russia after NASA did some testing on it, but NASA made us this um, copy of it. And every year, the Rare West Art Museum puts on Sputnik Fest, which is a local community festival to celebrate the event. People dress up in crazy costumes, and we dance and sing, play silly games. Sputnik Fest is the weekend after Labor Day, and I hope that at this year's Sputnik Fest you can all join us and see some dogs dressed up as aliens and things like that. It's a very fun day. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and explore the mansion of the Rare West Art Museum with me today. Uh, again, to all the second graders who couldn't make it this year, we're really sorry and we missed having you. We hope maybe you can come next year. When you come in with your families, 
you now have all this information so you can be the tour guide. I hope that you have a wonderful day filled with art, and I wish you well. Stay safe.